everybody it's nicole so i know it's been several days since my last video and my life um it's still been a bit crazy um but i wanted to come on here to talk about um what it is like to be a person who has um I guess, you know, mental illness issues and chronic illness issues. And then to make this big, huge change and travel from essentially one um, part of the country to the middle of the country. So basically going about 3,500 miles um, and making this big, big huge change when all of you know I don't deal with well with change because I know a couple of you have asked me um to talk about it what my experience was and all that stuff and if you see this red here it's because I, there was something that was itchy so nothing to worry about so um for those of you who know me because you have been um subscribed to me for a while now uh, thank you for always coming back and checking out my videos. I really appreciate it. Um, and then for those of you who are new or who found me um, for some reason or other, thank you for clicking on my video. I super appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, and I hope I can earn um, your, um, I guess, uh, the ability to earn you hitting that subscribe button, giving me a thumbs up, and uh, joining my ohana because I don't necessarily like the word uh, subscribers. I like the words uh, ohana better because um, that's what you guys are. You are part of my family. Uh, I think I've made um, this channel a safe space uh, for people like us who um, deal with depression, bipolar, anxiety, um, fibromyalgia, MS, or whatever it is that you deal with, whether it's something that is vis uh, visible or invisible, uh, to come together and discuss these difficult subjects along with talking about all the other fun stuff like, you know, um buy yarn um doing my resin pours that i am hoping to start at some point when i get um when i get my craft desk i have not gotten it yet i'm still we're still in this kind of in the middle situation where my husband has not gotten his first paycheck yet um and it's weird because they get paid on wednesdays and not on fridays but whatever so he hasn't gotten his first paycheck yet. So I don't know really what our finances are going to look like because obviously his pay is a little different. Uh, cost of living is different. And so, yeah, so there's there's a reason why um, I haven't been able to like just jump right on in and um, start things back up. Plus, it's been just utter chaos with trying to, with school, um, we still only have one car. We're going to be getting our second car on Friday. Have not heard anything yet on the third car. I'm, we're hoping to hear something between now and Friday because that's when we're going to be picking up, uh, the second car in Texas that, um, the third car will be ready for pickup on Friday. So we have to make another trip to Arlington, uh, to pick it up. So in any case, um, if you are new here, um, this is my channel and we talk about yarn, which obviously I have, I have not bought any yarn yet to replace any of the stash that I had either donated, given away, um, or sold off. Um, I have not gone to Hobby Lobby or Joanne's or anything like that. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to buy anything from any of, uh, the mainland companies to take advantage of any of the sales yet, um, which I'm looking forward to. 
And then I have not, um, the other thing I really enjoy doing is opening yarn mystery boxes. That's what we do on this channel as well, along with um, doing my resin pours, which I brought along all of the resin that um, some of you had given to me uh, via donations, which I really have appreciated. Um, and then this wall you see behind me, I did manage to clear out everything that was on the floor here. So I can make room uh, for my craft space. So um, this wall back here will be the backdrop. Um, in uh, my videos, I'm hoping, depending on how I set things up, but this is going to be essentially my crafting area along with, you know, certain other things. And so, um, and then the other thing we talk about on this channel is um, mental health, self-care, mental illnesses, along with chronic pain, chronic illnesses, and then how they all kind of tally together. And the example that I always like to use is, is how, like, for example, for me, I deal with anxiety and panic attacks and that. Um, while it is, yes, it's a mental illness, it does manifest itself um, as physical things like hyperventilating, sweating, uh, you know, things like that. And then on the opposite end, when you're talking about something like fibromyalgia, which is something that I also deal with, which is um, an autoimmune thing. And I deal with chronic pain every single day. It does not go away, unfortunately. Um, and fluctuates with what I do and how much I do. If I do too much, I usually end up paying for it. Sometimes it's a couple of days, sometimes a couple of weeks, depending on how much I overdo it. Um, and then for those of you who may know, um, depending on, you know, how serious you are, uh, your situation is, and what kind of support system you may or may not have. Um, sometimes it ends up leading to depression. Sometimes it ends up leading to becoming housebound. Uh, for me, um, it has uh, led to being uh, slightly housebound. I tend to not leave the house a lot because I just don't like it. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. Um, and then also, uh, driving gives me a lot of anxiety and so, yeah. Um, and then the other thing too is to tie that all together is, um, doing the resin and the yarn, all that stuff is what I consider art therapy and how that all pulls together all in one nice, um, discussion and that I want and I like that this channel is something and some place that you can come and talk amongst each other, talk to me about whatever it is that's going on in your life um, that, you know, may just not be going so great. And that's okay because um, you can't be happy all the time. That's virtually impossible. It is virtually impossible. Uh, I don't. I don't know of anybody who is 100% happy all of the time. So with that being said, okay, so we're like almost nine minutes into the video. Um, so this video might be a little bit on the longer side because I know a lot of you wanted me to talk about what it was like for me to travel from Hawaii all the way to Oklahoma, which was a long trek with two kids and two cats and my whole, whole house which was done differently. We didn't use a moving company. Everything was shipped through UPS and the post office. Um, and how all of that went and how it affected me mentally and um, physically. So um, if, you know, if that's something that's not interesting to you, I will, my feelings will not be hurt. Um, you can go ahead and shut it off and um, watch another video of mine that maybe is a little more interesting until I can get into more, um, get a chance to, um, you know, picking up where I left off as far as, you know, buying yarn and whatnot. And then of course I will be trying to um, have 
alive here within the next couple of days i'm trying to it's kind of hard with the schedule that i have everything is kind of all mixed up i d unfortunately don't have a schedule set up yet because every everything is all over the place because um school starts at a different time than it did in hawaii and my body is still acclimating to the time difference yes i know it's like okay you you've been there for like two and a half weeks don't you think maybe it should have adjusted by now but no unfortunately it has not um and then also i'm still learning my way around town yes i still need to use google maps to figure out how to get from like my husband's work to my son's school because um there are a couple of ways to get there and because of that it gets a little confusing um and my sense of direction is awful I can find my way to my husband's work just fine because it's like literally nine minutes away from our house. So um, it's pretty hard to get lost. Um, and I'm the, I am not a north, north, south, east, west type of person. That's not how I grew up in Hawaii. Um, we use Malcolm Akai, Eva, um, those types of directions. In other words, we use the mountains, the ocean, um that's how we discerned um which direction and then i also use landmarks you know like okay you need to turn uh right at the um the u-haul store or you turn left at um this such and such landmark you know at the greenhouse or whatever it is so that's how i do directions so for me it's it's taking a little bit so that's one thing and so um and then the other thing too is um while yes i do have you know the kids and my cats and my husband and um, as you know, I left my my mom, my sister, my essentially my immediate family uh, behind in Hawaii. Which, um, when it comes to my mom, I love her to death. Um, she's my mom, and she will always be my mom. But as you well know, there are certain things about her that are not healthy as far as our relationship goes. I'll give you an example. Um, so a couple of days ago, she has sent me a text message and she said to me, I just wanted to make sure that if there was anybody in the family that had given you gifts, in other words, money, um, as you know, like a farewell or a bon voyage, uh, you know, hope you do well type of a gift, a card or whatever it is, it, you send a thank you card, some sort of um, note of gratitude to them um, to let them know that you appreciate their gift. Okay, so that was a couple of days ago. Now, we did not get here into town until August 2nd. Um, it is... August 23rd. It is not like it is um, December, much less the middle of September, October. I don't have a dresser. I don't have a bed frame for my bed. Um, I don't even have a microwave. I don't have a rice cooker. Um, and while, yes, I will be writing thank you notes. It's not something that I won't be doing. But I don't need my mom to tell me, uh, a 44-year-old adult, that I need to write thank you cards to the people who have generously given me money as a, um, as a gift. Um, I figured I had a little bit of time, a little bit of leeway before getting hounded by my mom about doing such things. And... Let me tell you, if I don't do it, she will ask those people, like my aunt, uh, my cousins or whatever, if I have sent out those thank you cards. 
And if I have not, she will hound me until I do it. Yes, even at 3,500 miles away, she will text me and or call me until I do it. So um, I'm sure you say, well, just go ahead and do it and get it over with. Well, um, I honestly, whether you think I'm right or wrong, I think I have a little bit of time to get settled sit down because it's not like i want to sit down and be like you know write some half half excuse my language half-assed thank you letter to um, my relatives saying uh yeah thanks for the money and i'm just gonna you know send a thank you card i actually want to sit down and put some thought into the thank you notes before i send them out and so i want to be able to sit down and do that um, but obviously my mom thinks I'm taking too long being that I got here on the second. We didn't actually get into our unit until late in the day on the second of this month. Um, school started on the 10th. My husband's work started on the 10th. And since then it has been nothing but trying to figure out Who's supposed to go where, what time we leave so that my husband gets to work on time, picking up the cars from, you know, one car from Texas, driving back. That's a whole day of, you know, driving on the road, this and that and the other thing, making sure that the kids have, you know, a bed. We have a bed, so you're not sleeping on the floor, blah, 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 blah. But obviously that's not important. So that's the one thing um, that I've been dealing with mentally is, is that you would think that being this far away that I would be able to escape some of the nonsense that my mother tends to like to dole out. No, no. Um, the other thing too is um, that I was dealing with was there was a lot of guilt about leaving because my dad had passed uh, away suddenly a couple of years ago and leaving my mom um, back home and just having my sister there. Uh, I don't know how my sister feels about that. I know that um, there are certain things that she has regretted that she has done um, in her life that involved um, certain things with my parents, uh, like the house that she currently resides in. Mm, there was there was this whole hullabaloo with that. Um, that's a long story. Um, that we were supposed to be included in, but got excluded because I lost my job because I got sick. My mom decided to cut us out. Um, my sister got a brand new house. We were gonna get a house that was built in the 1950s and then ex and that was basically falling apart and then expected to pay rent. And it, we were going to be expected to pay more rent than we were in the old place we were living in. Um, so that's another thing. And then the other thing too is, is that, um, my hope is, is that once I do find a therapist and that's, uh, I'm counting the days until, um, my husband's medical insurance goes into effect so that I can, uh, quickly start searching for a primary care physician and some, um, uh, mental health care. Um, so that I can make sure that I stay on track with my medications, um, both my, like my pain medication along with my psychiatric medications. Um, and so it's his, me uh, his medical insurance and his prescription insurance should be kicking in on the first, which is essentially next week. So we're hoping to be getting all of that information here shortly so that I can start setting up appointments because the sooner that I can get in um, and get my husband in, the better. Um, so that's another thing as well. Um, and then the other thing is, is that 
physically it was really difficult traveling um while yes uh, my friend my best friend robin had who um, she has heart problems she had made a really great suggestion to me um prior to me traveling she said that uh, to call the airlines to ask for wheelchair assistance uh, for the entire trip so that um we would get help with luggage and whatnot you know and then getting from gate to gate so i wouldn't have to walk quite so much because it was difficult you know because i'm sure you guys know sometimes the gates are not right next to each other as, at the airport so that's that's one thing that i did um but the big thing was the the long travel time so for example flying from Honolulu to Seattle was, um, I think it was a, about six hours. And so, and then we had a, quite a bit of a long layover in Seattle and then it was Seattle to Dallas. And then we drove from Dallas to, to Stillwater. Um, and so when we got off the plane in Seattle, everything hurt. I couldn't, um, I couldn't bend my joints um i still have difficulty bending my joints till now um since we um left honolulu on the 31st um so basically like bending my knees my elbows are a challenge um sleep is a challenge of course that's always been a challenge but it's even more of a challenge um where where it's i'm either extremely exhausted or i just can't sleep at all um and for a little bit there i thought i got some reprieve from the pain i was dealing with in my stomach um unfortunately that is not the case it has since come back um and it has come roaring back and unfortunately with that it's kind of like I have to stop and think, do I need to take the medicine, my pain medication now, or can I like grit my teeth and wait a while because I don't have a prescribing physician to, um, to see, you know, to start writing new prescriptions for, um, because, um, I also am planning on finding a pain management physician for myself and for my husband to separately manage those things than our primary care physician. So um, that's the other thing as well. Um, and yes, we, um, we're all still adjusting to uh, the weather. It is hot, um, I'll give you that, yes. it. Um, I think when my sister-in-law and her husband came up here, it was like, I think the hottest it got was 109. Um, but it wasn't humid. So um, I can deal with it in short bursts, just not long periods of time. Um, And the other thing too, I guess, the big difference is, is now we have central air. So that makes a big difference. And and in reality, I don't leave the house much anyway, like I did before. So it's not like I'm outside all the time. I don't know if that's gonna change. Right away, I'm sure it'll probably take me some time uh, for that to change. We'll see how things go um, once I get a therapist and a psychiatrist here. Um, because my old therapist thinks that with being away from my mom, distance-wise, uh, will help recovery go better because he always felt that because my mom was so close physically it 
was hindering my recovery mentally and then also physically as well because as i said um you know they kind of all coincide together and so he's hoping that when i get the doctors that i need for everything that um it'll all start slowly getting better and more under control and so that's what i'm hoping as well um i guess all in all the travel was the toughest part to begin with other than the packing the packing was hard um i had said over and over again through the packing process is that um well, I knew that it wasn't worth it for us to pay a packing company or a moving company to take all of our stuff and ship it. I wish, you know, I I wish that we had done it. Um, but I mean, we did it. We got everything packed. We got everything shipped off. Um, I think on Friday we're gonna get another box. But for the most part, I think we've gotten everything that we shipped. Uh, via UPS or via post office um, in one piece. Like I said, we had very minimal damage from um, from the post office and from UPS. Uh, like I said, the Instant Pot was the only thing that really was a big deal that got broken. Um, uh, I didn't, we didn't pack any sort of like I didn't bring dishes or pots and pans and stuff because it, I didn't feel like it was necessary. I felt like we could, you know, just repurchase here um, because it wasn't like I had like family heirloom, heirlooms or whatever. Um, and I'm not picky. I'm not the, the type of person that has to say like, oh, I have to have this brand or have to have that brand in order to... Um, fill my cabinets with the particular, you know, cookware, whatever. Um, I mean, I bought my silverware um, and the things that I needed for the kitchen from the dollar store or from Ross's and stuff. Doesn't matter. Um, they all eat the same. They all use the same. Uh, they all do the things that I needed to do. They cook the food that I put on the table. Um, they cut the food they you know uh so that's that and then let's see what else um so far i haven't had anything any sort of bouts of home sickness yet we'll see how i feel in the next couple of months um, if I feel any sort of homesickness and, oh, um, for those of you who are wondering, I don't have any family who, uh, who lives on Maui. Um, so my family personally was not affected by anybody, um, by the Maui fires. But if, um, you know, if you feel the need to help uh, the people of Lahaina, please do so. Um, we've been seeing all the devastation and of course the huge, there was, was a lot of incompetence done in Maui when it came to the fires and the fact that they're saying that close to, I don't know, maybe about a hundred or so children are missing um, because the schools were closed on that particular day. And so, um, they, and the reason why they know that, obviously, is that apparently there's some sort of spreadsheet of that they're trying to keep track of people who are still looking for their loved ones. And there's a lot of children who have not shown up for school because they have reopened school. And there are lots of kids who have not re-enrolled in school uh, in Lahaina. So um, if you feel the need to give, please do so. Um, whether it's monetary or not. Um, but just be careful who you donate to. Make sure you check the... Um, because I don't know um, the right 
uh, organizations, organizations to donate to, be sure that when you are donating um, to an organization for the Lahaina victims, that you are choosing a, a uh, organization that is giving to the residents of Lahaina and not um, an organization that you don't know is going to actually give the money to them. Because I know that there are a lot of organizations out there. Um, and sorry for the loud noise, the central air just kicked on. Um, so just be sure you do your homework before you donate. Um, because I wouldn't want your money to go to an organization that is not giving to the residents of, of Lahaina because that's who needs it. Um, from what I heard, um, the government is only giving them $700 per household. And as you guys well know, for me, $700 does diddly squat when you live in Hawaii. That doesn't hardly buy you nothing. Um... So, but for me personally, um, my family all either live on the island of Hawaii or the big island um, or on Oahu. So um, the only way I was affected is because I'm from Hawaii and that is where my heart is, that um, is my home. And so, um, it, it hurts my heart when I see all the devastation that has happened there. Um, so that's the other thing too is is I'm here in Oklahoma and I'm seeing what's going on there and you know even though I don't know anybody on Maui although, although well I take that back my sister's husband's family is on Maui but from what I understand uh, I don't think anybody was on that side of the island. So otherwise, I would have heard about it. But um, uh, so, as, like I said, nobody that I am aware of in my family has been affected. But I feel really guilty because I'm here, and there, and the people of Hawaii are hurting, um, which I know probably just doesn't make any sense, but. That's my home state. There's people I love there. Um, and the people of Hawaii are wonderful. Um, it's the Aloha state. And I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it just really, it hurts. It hurts a lot seeing those people hurting. So anyway, um, back to how this trip affected me physically and mentally I, I guess that's about it that physically the the travel itself the flying on the plane was hard it was really hard sitting and traveling for over 24 hours was really tough and then driving over four hours from Dallas to Stillwater was also tough my husband and I did take turns driving the rental um, and then, of course, when we went to get uh, um, the first car, um, that was another nice long trip. It was just my husband and I that, that went to go pick up the car. The kids stayed at home. Um, and then this Friday, we'll be picking up the second car. We're hoping the third car will be there. So, uh, because I would just want to get the dang two cars and have it just be over with. Those are the, that's the other big thing um and then the last of it is essentially um routine 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 i um i thrive on routine i thrive on knowing where i need to be when i need to be there who needs to be where at what time um it settles my anxiety it settles me um mentally and physically um i don't freak out and constantly looking at the clock uh thinking am i late you know things like that um 
my husband though is um, enjoying his job um, he sound it sounds like his bosses are fantastic he's it sounds like he also is getting a lot more freedom at his his new job as far as um, you know what he uh, is able to do and not able to do um, and pretty much his bosses tell him as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do um, you're good to go you know as, you, as long as you get your job done we don't care so um, so yeah uh, I mean and considering he started on the 10th they were really okay from what he told me with um, him swapping out Friday so that we can go get the car and then um, he'll work on Saturday instead so um, and then we're hoping, like I said, that the second car will arrive so we can pick it up Friday because he doesn't want to have to ask for another day off. Um, but yeah, that's that's the biggest thing is routine, 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 routine. And um, it may take me several months to get that down because I, because the biggest thing is, is that um, my husband will be, uh, working these set of hours when he's during training and then obviously there's school and then when he's done with training then his schedule is going to change again and that is going to mess with me again um, so that's the difficult part so I don't know it, it may seem ridiculous to some but that's that's what what I deal with um mentally and it affects me physically um and i think that's what's been like affecting like my gut um and i've been having this like crook in my neck i've been having horrible headaches um to the point where i feel ill and all that stuff so and i think part of it too is i'm still adjusting to the five hour time difference and um because it's warm it's like it's like you know it's like 100 plus degrees outside and then you walk into a restaurant or the grocery store or whatever it is and then it's freezing cold and so what's funny is is that so okay so i bring my jacket with me because i know that it's it's, it's hot outside and then i know it's going to be chilly and wherever it is that we go so I bring my jacket with me so that I can put my jacket on when we get inside of where we go. So like, I think it was the other day we went to eat at Slim Chickens and um, it was, what was it? It was 103, I think, outside. And I brought my jacket, my favorite jacket, and got inside and it was freezing inside so i was glad i brought my jacket everybody's looking at me funny because i brought my jacket but you know what i feel comfortable and i don't care um and i was able to eat my dinner uh without freezing my butt off and so um even my youngest he'll bring his jacket and um he's he's adjusting well at school which i'm glad because i was nervous that you know he wouldn't be but he's adjusting well um seems to be doing fine with switching classes and you know he's got that all all down pat mom i think was a little worried more worried than he was um so yeah i don't know ask me in an, in in four to six months how I'm how I'm doing and um, maybe I'll feel a little different because I'll have uh, doctors behind me and uh, my medications and everything all figured out I'm hoping by then and I won't be so freaked out about everything because that's what I feel right now so with that and clicking on to 40 minutes we're going to end this uh, with that. I don't know with my rambling uh, and kind of veering off topic if that has helped anybody um, knowing that 
moving from one end of the country to another or to a totally new place with the, the issues that I have and not really knowing anybody if this has helped. Um, but I hope it has. And know that you're not alone if this is something that you're going to be doing or you're thinking about doing. Um, that it can be done. It might be difficult, but it can be done. Um, and if uh, and always always know uh, that it's important to have a, a support system. If you don't, reach out to me. I can help you. I can talk to you. Listen, whatever it is you need, um, and uh, send me an email. Whatever it is you need, and um, yeah, and. I'll try to put out a couple more videos there, um, and because uh, there's one thing that I have that I want to unbox uh, that I got and then yeah so uh, we'll see how things go over the next couple of days because uh, Thursday and Friday are going to be a little bit chaotic but until then I will uh, see you in my next video uh, hopefully a little more uh less chaotic bye